This episode of The Honeydew is brought to you by Harry's and Skillshare. More on that later. Let's get into the do. The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler. Welcome back to The Honeydew, y'all. We're over here doing it in the Night Pan Studios. I am Ryan Sickler. Ryan Sickler on all social media. RyanSickler.com. Website for the show, thehoneydewpodcast.com. That's where you can go find everything and anything you want to know about me or the show. Um, YouTube, make sure you're subscribed. Don't just watch. If you're watching, hit that subscribe. Let's get those numbers up. Um, the community is growing incredibly, especially since June when we started here. So thank you so much. Um, and if you got that extra money and the extra time and you want an extra episode a week, please subscribe to the Patreon, the Honeydew with y'all, where I'm doing a honeydew with y'all, and that community as well has been fantastic. There's some wild, wild stories. Uh, every week has been something else out there, and I can already tell you, looking through the emails, that that's there's no shortage of that. Shit, so <laughs> uh, sign up for a year, you'll save over uh, a month of free episodes. You'll get, and um, it's only five bucks a month. So. That's that. Now, you know I record here at the Santa Monica Music Center. If you need musical instruments or lessons, just go to santamonicamusic.com. Use the code HONEYDOO. They'll waive the registration fee, and they will give you one free lesson when you sign up for a package. Now, that's the biz right there. What we do here on this show, we highlight the low lights. We like to shed a little light on that darkness and you know, laugh in the face of trauma. Uh, today, my guest returns via Nashville. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Josh Wolf, everybody. What's up, man? Oh, How you doing? The yeah. Wolf is back, yeah. y'all. He is back. <laughs> now, first of all, man, I forgot to mention this when I saw you, but that beard is looking good. It's, That's it's nice of you to it's say. It's fuller you. than I've seen. I think I've seen it. I've never grown a beard. Um, I, my hair, uh, you know. Yeah. Look, man, I'm almost. I'm 48 in March. I'm almost 50, and I figured I still fucking have it. Yep. Might as well show some appreciation to it. Killing so it. It's nothing I can't cut off. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, people, I like it, dude. People tell me, you know, I don't. I fucking be. I don't like that beard. I'm like, well, I can shave this off. You're stuck with that face yeah, forever. That, Come on, <laughs> hey, dude. You know what I'm saying? That, can I tell you <laughs> something? I was in. Col- you can use that. I was in Columbus, Ohio, and this woman was in the front row. And um, she said something about um, nice chicken legs. I go, oh, yeah, I, go, I do. I, I got skinny legs. She goes, you do. You have skinny legs. Nice chicken legs. I go, yeah. I said, but I could go to the gym and bulk these up. I go, what are you going to do about that face? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what are you exactly going to do about I said. that? I go, what are you going to do about that face? <laughs> and she goes, what? I go, I think that stays with you. And it doesn't get any better. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. You know, I'm with you, dude. But it's funny we were just talking about hecklers and talking to people. I have a very, I have a very distinct way of doing it all the time. I let you hang yourself. Like I want you to get so annoying to the rest of the audience that I can now say whatever I want yeah. to you, and they're the other rest of the audience is gonna be like, thank you. Yeah. So, because if you go hard on somebody real fast, the crowd is not going to. I just a big believer in don't start none, won't be none. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> you know, I say it. I just said it on another podcast. Yeah. I come yeah. in peace, yeah. ready for war. Yeah. I'm here to be cool. Yeah, if man. you don't want to be cool, it's that's been a big uh, problem for me. I, I'm sure you and every other comedian, too. But, you know, interactions with people where... You know, they're just giving it to you. And you're like, man, you know, by nature, I'm a smart ass, but I'm also a professional comedian. So Mm -hmm. now you're asking me to put down all of my fucking weapons and take the high road and not say anything. It has taken me decades to get 60% okay at that. I, it's so hard to bite my tongue and not say something. Why do you bite your tongue? Well, it depends on oh, the situation. You mean at the beginning. It could be my daughter's right. mother and I are disagreeing, and I'm just like, whoo, boy, let me just shut <laughs> the fuck up. <laughs> oh, that let me yeah. shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, know what I'm saying? Like, very, Ooh. it's so funny. Ooh, my just blood poured out of my mouth. No. like, you all right? I'm like, all right. 
Yeah, I'm all right. Just keep going from that one. I think that's the thing I learned the most over the relationship with my wife, which is early on when you're young, I, if you think she's wrong, you, you know what? It's my right. She, if she, if I think she's wrong, she needs to know. I yep, think your but, ego's like, tell her she's wrong. Yeah. Tell she, her she's wrong. Because she needs to know it. That's yep. why. Because you're right. Because yeah. you're right. And when you get older, you're like, that's not important. That's not. Just, this, I'm like, I didn't even hear what you said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather you yell at me for me saying I'm not. I wasn't paying attention. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm gonna step out back for a smoke, <laughs> and then I'll come in. I swear I'll be a much better yeah, listener. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I will tell you. There's Beth will tell me. She was like, I want to talk to you about something, but and I go, okay. She goes, let's just wait till you get high. And I'm like, why? She goes, well, I really want you to listen. And that's actually, I'm like, that's probably a smart move because I hear things differently when I'm high. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because my entire, like, yeah, that's it. Everything's just like, hey, man, it's it's all right. Yeah, whatever it is. Well, you see it for what it really is. That's what medication does. It's medication. Do you, uh, I like how you, we refer to weed as medication. It's medication. Yeah. It's a different kind of medication. I know people want to clown it or whatever, but it is absolute. I'd much rather take a couple hits of weed and calm the fuck down about some bullshit anyway. Yeah. It's nonsense. We're not talking about anything real. We're talking about the color of a couch right now. Yeah. Let me, you, you, yeah. you upset about the color <laughs> of the couch? Let me go outside and smoke a joint real quick. And I'll tell you what, we can get whatever the fuck couch you want when I come back. Cause I ain't going to give a shit. That, dude, but that is the beauty of weed. For sure. It takes away all the edges for me. Me, 100%. It takes away all the edges. I have said me. it has made me a better person, yeah. a better parent, a better partner. It's made me more patient. All the P's, more patient. It's It has really done that. And I'd rather that than take you know some magic pill that's not going to really work or cause me you know 800 other side effects. Right. You know? How old were you when, you when you first smoked weed? God, I was a late bloomer. I first tried it at 18 years old. I was in my buddy's Firebird in my driveway, my gravel Ooh. driveway. And uh, give me a little d description of that Firebird. So it's a red Firebird glad t glass tee tops. Oh, uh, shit. remember the tan interiors on the red? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know I do. And um, uh, you know what those cars do when you push the seat. It flopped up fast. Yeah, really fast. Yeah, it yeah, came so a hinge. That yeah, that was a hinge. It was. <laughs> yeah. It was like it was bungee cord together, and it was just like, you know? yeah. <laughs> like it was slingshot yeah. somebody out there. I remember the first time it flopped up. I was like, oh shit, okay, yeah, I better get out of the way. Um, and he rolled this joint, and it's it looked like I've said this before. It looked like Brock's candy. It just looked like I was like, what the fuck is this? So yeah. I go to hit it, and it just. On the inhale, it breaks apart in my mouth. The whole joint is sitting on my tongue. And I'm like, he's like, don't spit it out. So I eat the thing. And I feel nothing. But I do get incredibly hungry not long after that. Really? We all hit the double tea diner. I tried it again like a month later because I was scared of it. And then I walk up to, we were all at a little field party. And uh, the guys were finishing a bowl. When I went to get it, it was just ashed. And then I didn't do it again until I was 21. And when I was 21, I started on the weekends only, just weekends, weekends. And I didn't – I don't think I started nightly until – and I do say nightly because it was nightly first before it became any everything else. But What's everything else mean? Well, it depends. If it's Sunday and it's football, I'll smoke a joint at 10, 30, 11 o'clock and yep. watch the Ravens. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I don't know why I do it because the adrenaline overrides the high every. I'm like, I'm like, I, what, what did I just waste the death? Fucking you, <laughs> <laughs> we just fumbled. God damn it! And then there it all goes. I'm like, what did I do that? What did I do that? <laughs> That's the premium shit right there. <laughs> do you do you watch do you watch the games like that? Like in front of you with your daughter, does she know? No, does I don't she smoke hear marijuana around? No, no, my not kid. smoke weed, oh. but like, do you get like? Um, oh yeah, heated. Oh yeah, I have a video of me. She took it. It was uh this was this year 
And it was a game where we, I think Tucker had to hit like a 55 yard field goal at the end in overtime or something. Mm -hmm. And she grabbed my phone and was recording me. She goes, I want to record you watching this. I was like, oh, and then we hit it. So she's got a video of me screaming and jumping. But yeah, she's a fan. She really does like the Ravens. And I think the purple helped. Yo, but she loves Lamar Jackson. Like she loves Orlando Brown Jr. because he's a friend. You know, she loves him too. So she's all stoked about the Ravens. Jacob Wolf. Um, there was, so I watch, I don't, by the way, is looking more and more like you. He's a handsome man. Every day. I don't mean, I don't say, I don't say say he's a handsome man because he looks like me. I'm saying he's a handsome (laughs) man. Yeah, he is handsome. Um, so Jacob Wolf. So when he was probably like, this was 2004. So he was seven years old and, um, 2004 was a magical year for the Red Sox. Mm -hmm. And uh, by the way, oddly enough. I stopped watching the game, any games with intensity. Like I don't really, I watch them, but I don't scream at TVs anymore. But like uh, the 2004, the Red Sox, I'm screaming at the TV and he was upstairs and he comes downstairs and I can hear his footsteps coming down. I go, what's up? And he goes, you're scaring me. And I go, well, you should go back upstairs then. <laughs> Cause I'm shitting myself. <laughs> It's not going to get any better than this, dude. Are you kidding? It's the fourth inning. Like, you should get... But I watch him watch now. And he's screaming at the TV. And and I'm like, oh, yeah, sorry about that. I scream when it's something positive that happens. I don't yell anymore at the fumbles in the back. I'm like, oh, come on. or You know, I I don't get much more out of that pocket. And after we lose in a big game, like the fucking playoffs back-to-back years, uh, three three years, yeah. Yeah. you know, I don't let it get me down like like those people. I've I'm, I've seriously seen people fucking trash their TVs, throw shit through the Yo, wall. I watched f- a guy, an Eagles fan, one time take his hat and he fucking threw it in the fireplace. Yeah, and he's ranting, and, and this thing's on. And then he goes, "God damn it!" He goes in there, and gets it, shakes it out, and puts it back on. But it's all burnt Dude, up. Like he's dumb. <laughs> Some You're dumb because my- <laughs> you root for the Eagles and you just did that. <laughs> Who's saving the Eagles hat? <laughs> Some of my favorite videos to watch online are sports fans burning shit or breaking TVs or throwing shit. I'm like, you dumb motherfucker. You are the dumbest dummy. You just threw a table through a TV because Alabama lost. Like, yeah. Now you got to buy another TV. It makes sense if you lost a bunch of money yeah. on it. Yep. Okay. Yep. That's all right. Uh, it does make sense. It does. When you, when, especially, have, have you been beat bad in a game? Have you ever been beat bad? Yeah, I've been beat bad. My life has beat me bad. I have a. <laughs> have I ever been beat bad? <laughs> I have a show about it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I dedicated a studio uh, to this, yeah, yeah, yeah. man. We're in the Night Pass Studios. <laughs> Oh, God, dude, man. Yeah, man. Listen, I want to, because we talked about some stuff before the show. It's sort of a segue here anyway. We're talking about being beat bad, sabotage. You started telling me about, and I didn't know this. I didn't know you were battling with depression, and you started talking about your self-realization about self-sabotaging shit. I want to talk to you about that because that's, yeah. that's interesting to me because I – you had said career things, and I said certainly. I, I mean, I could probably look back and think about something I sabotaged in my career for sure. But I mean, I didn't even know I had a career then. You know yeah. what I mean? I didn't know. I just was being a comedian. I didn't know anything about molding this into a career and and revenue streams. And when we started, it, MySpace wasn't even there. That no. that came up, and then yeah. websites and YouTube's and boom, 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 trying to evolve with this shit. Like, what career? So I still what career? <laughs> <laughs> I got two microphones and a sign, bro. <laughs> you got <a> table. <laughs> that ain't no motherfucking career. <laughs> this is a rental. Is a r- <laughs> yeah, man. I, uh, I, I think it depends on where where you. I, th- I think probably where you sabotage yourself is where you maybe feel you don't value yourself. Do you know what I mean? Where you don't deserve yeah. something. Yeah, I feel like that a lot still. Yeah, for me, man, you know, I, I um I have Can I ask you this? Is yeah. it, it 
Have you ever tried, like when you've gotten anything, saying to yourself, like, I deserve this? Like, I feel guilty about saying that. Yeah. It blows my mind that I feel guilty about saying I deserve this. Like, why do I feel guilty about that? I fucking obviously earned it. Like, what is it in us? What's been instilled in us that we feel guilty for yeah. accomplishing something good? It, It's not. Uh, yeah, it's it, it's that. You feel for me, I just feel like I don't somehow deserve it. But why? Yeah, like, that's what, what is I, that? And that's the thing. That's that I don't I don't know. And so from like I've I do go through dips of just dark shit. You know, I think a lot of people do. Describe a dip. What are we talking about? Days, weeks, and what do you what's you your know, behavior like? What are you doing? What here, are you going through? Here's the deal. Like, I really used to identify in a way now look don't i don't want anyone going crazy when i use this comparison but i identified with brody in this way okay brody i identify with Chappelle in that we're both great comics no <laughs> <laughs> i was wondering where you were going <laughs> uh, Chappelle says a lot yeah. of shit i'm thinking he just says it first yeah <laughs> Yeah, but I identify, you know. That's how I. Because <laughs> uh, when I said that, you kind of. you. <laughs> I was like, where is he going with this? I definitely gave you a look. When you said Brody, I was like, okay, all right. I understand where I think you might be going. In that sometimes I overcompensate happiness when I'm feeling my worst. Right? Much like the person who tells everybody how much they can fight all the time and how tough they are. They're talking about it because they are super insecure about how they can't fight, right? Or how they're weak they are. And so when I'm overly happy, when I, when I, I'm, it just, when it seems like too much, like what well, he's, and I'm a positive person. So yeah. it's easy for me to hide it in there. But um, I just, during those times, I wake up like, or you're like, you're a piece of shit. Like, what the fuck? It's just self thoughts. All the just. And are you withdrawing from people too? Your wife, your kids? Or are you just sort of like being a loner for that time period? And is that a day we're talking, or is this a a weekly thing, or what happens? It is a completely depends on. It's never just a day. It's. You know, and I'm lucky, man. I don't get it as bad as I think some people do. You just feel like a piece of shit. But I'm always telling myself that I'm a piece. During that time, I can't figure out how I'm ever going to do anything right. Like, it's just like, and I and if you gave me a suggestion, if I was like, man, this isn't working, and you gave me a suggestion, I could tell you exactly why it wouldn't work if I was going to be involved. And then I'll just remind myself of all of my failures. I'll be like, why do you think this is going to work, man? This has never worked. Like, you tried this. This didn't. Mm -hmm. And I'm just constantly beating myself down. And uh, the uh, I've even when things are good, I'll come in at like, okay, I'll give you an example of something that's happened recently that you would understand. I'll say, so take a look, a look at Control Chaos, right? Yeah. If I am honest with myself and I had an honest talk with an exec and uh, a, a person at an agency that I trust and came to the shows, like the reason that never went across the goal line, even though I had a ton of interest, is I just never made it. I pushed it up to the goal line and then I never made it look good. I never made it sound good. I never made the which I could have. I had the money to do. And I chose not to do that. I chose not to do that. And I talked to the exec. They were like, you missed the window when we were all there. You just never gave us what they all asked for something. The same thing. Like, look, we need a one sheet or whatever. And you just don't. We do need it. this to look like this. Show us what this is going to look like. And as soon as they asked me to do what I needed to do, I just didn't do it. But do you think that's sabotage or also protecting yourself you know you're now it's also ego in a way too where because now someone's telling you to change the very thing you've been doing is so hard it, 
Like every editor mm -hmm. I've ever worked with, this is what I say about every editor's attitude I've ever worked with. And I love editors because they, they make the magic. But every editor I've ever worked with gives you their cut. Mm -hmm. And then you go, this is great. What do you think about just trying this, this, and this? And they go, yeah, if you want to fuck it up, we can do that. Like that's... <laughs> That's every editor yeah, I've yeah, ever yeah. worked with attitude <laughs> about their work. And yeah. I'm like, man, I wish I had that confidence in my fucking shit, you know? But but that's but that's one of the things that we don't have that confidence in our shit. And no, I, I don't think that What do you think it was then? Because if I if it was one if it would have been one isolated incident, I'd have been like, all right. Well that I but when I look back at the other things that I've pushed up to the Go line, and there's been a lot, dude. I've had a lot of opportunity. I really have. It's always been something that I just didn't follow through on or didn't go that extra foot that I knew I had to. And I I did enough not to blame myself. When I look back at all this shit, I did enough not to blame myself. It was almost like I wanted the misery that came after the rejection. It was almost mm. like I I was comfortable in that space. I just was talking to a friend about this. Like I was the same way for a long time, really trying to get out of it. Um, and I've met people, especially um, in our industry like this, but there are people who absolutely thrive and function in chaos. Yeah. And the moment there is order and organization and bo shit gets boring or dull, they fuck it up because now shit's fucked up and this is how I thrive with this swirling pile of shit floating around Yeah, me. that's how I, that's yeah. how I, that's. And you don't need to survive that way. You no. shouldn't survive right. that way. There are, you can figure out a way to thrive without that. But I, um, I, but it's, I, just I not, it's just not as, it's just boring. I, <laughs> it's I, it's not as, yeah, it's man. not as entertaining. It, it's a fucked up thing. And when something bad happens, not only am I expecting it. That's but, why it happens. Yep. Not only am I expecting it, but it feels comfortable. Like I'm wearing the skin I'm supposed to be wearing. Like when things are going well, I feel like an imposter. And I. That's really interesting. I don't, I wouldn't say, I don't feel like an imposter. I feel like. You know, I feel like I'm in a, in a new place. You know what I'm saying? Like this shit looks familiar, but man, it doesn't feel. I don't remember feeling like this. You know what I mean? Like good shit's happening. Yeah, like, hmm, that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. Where's the hidden camera? Like, yeah. but yeah. I mean, dude, you know where where it started to really get highlighted for me. Was, Highlight them low lights. I'm gonna man. And I'll, I'll tell you where, the, and also where a lot of depression really came in when the Josh Wolf show ended, right? And one which I wanted to say, that's obviously something you pushed across the goal line. So you did it with that. Yes, I also didn't do what I needed to do while on it. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. So the Josh Wolf show when it came on the air. Look, man, when I was 14 years old, if you had asked me, what's your dream? I would have said, my dream is to have a late night talk show called The Josh Wolf Show, where my- Four nights a week. <laughs> <laughs> Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> On CMT. <laughs> <laughs> oh, At an off hour, but whatever. <laughs> Fuck Monday, Tuesday, yeah. Wednesday. <laughs> the watching. week starts on Thursday, <laughs> goddamn. <laughs> when y'all start going out, that's when we step up. All right. For those of you who stay at home on Fridays and Saturdays, <laughs> I got a show for you. Uh, but listen, man, that was the dream. And add to it that everybody on the couch was a friend of mine. I only, right? And yeah, you had me on. I was on with Diaz. And they had to cut Diaz out almost of the whole the episode. Almost the entire yeah, he, he, All they had left of him was the introduction. Uh, all, almost the whole episode. <laughs> and he would say something, and I'd be like, well, we're going to have to cut that. They can't fucking air that. And he'd say something again, and I'd be like, well, we can't. I think the one thing we kept, I think the one thing we kept was, was like a response. He was like, that's true. And yeah. that, you know, something like that. <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> but dude, everybody on that couch was a friend of mine or somebody who I liked who I didn't think was getting a shot to be on TV. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I told the CMT Sam Tripoli was coming on, they were like, "Oh man!" They were like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, "He's a you know, he's a friend of mine. He's a, all these people are friends of mine." And so that was part of the dream. And then I hi everybody I hired, I knew from a past gig or something. So it was like, and Jacob worked there. So literally surrounded by friends and family, going to work every day. When that ended, it was. I was like, okay, so that was my exact dream. And it was being, it was playing out exactly the way I wanted it to going to work with Jacob Wolf every day, friends and family there. What do I want now? And it was just like <laughs> straight. Jacob told me last night, cause we were talking about it. He was like, man, it was rough to watch you. And I was like, what do you mean? He was like, it was at least six months where you were just, after the show? Yeah, after the yeah. show ended. He goes, it was at least six months. And he was like, it was tough to watch. And I said, could you tell? And he's, he's like, like, me or the show? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> Don't you know I'm bummed out about it? <laughs> you dick. <laughs> Yo, he said something to me the other day oh, that was so fucking. He said to me, I said, I go, listen, man. We were talking about something. I go, listen, man. It might be time for you to grow up. And he goes. Coming from the dude who has a purse filled with baby hands. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> There's no comeback for that no. one. No. <laughs> but yeah, man, it went, it went. And then I, is when I really started to sabotage everything. I just don't know how to live in that that i feel like imposter over there it's very possible i mean i know it was said to me when i was younger you're a loser you'll never grow up to be shit you'll never be any of that thing so you know it's very possible even though we you and i have talked about this i and we have the same exact feeling i wish my um self um God, what is the word I'm looking for? Esteem. My self-esteem matched my self-confidence. Yeah. I'm very confident Me too. in my ability to do a task I'm given. My self-esteem, completely different thing. Mm -hmm. So, and that's probably created early on by someone shitting on that. And it probably plays into life of why we don't feel like we deserve things. Our self-esteem in situations is low and then boom you get it and you're like mm, i don't know how to feel about this so i feel like an outsider i'm trying to i'm trying to learn how to be more and more an insider i'm trying yeah. to stay on the yacht you yeah know yeah saying? me too man. i don't want to own a yacht yeah i, I want a yacht with y'all you know what <laughs> i just want a yacht I with be in the yacht club you know what i mean i just want to i want to have i want to know somebody yeah, in the club yeah. i don't want the i don't want the money pit <laughs> boat i just want to come on your boat you know yeah i i I'm with you, man. I, and you have got to be believe that you deserve it. You've got to believe that you, you know, you try it. I mean, you already, you already are aware that I thrive in mayhem. So mentally, see if you can't really go for one week of thriving in that's shit that's the, good, and that's then been and then the, build right. another week, and you know, day by day. But I'd say a week for something like that. I would start with like, let me just do a week of. Oh my God, shit's going good. And as soon as it starts going good, it does get better. It is really a, a lot of power of positive thinking, which is sounds like bullshit, but it's not. It's just hard as fuck to do. Yeah. It, it because it's like you said, you get your body gets used to living this in feeling, that feeling. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This weight. I, I really desperately am ready to be out of it the last like i said last three weeks or well, so do you go into therapy right now or are you on any medication or I'm both on medication man yeah it's just the medication you and i've been talking about well i mean that's good too yeah. but there's other shit but do you go to therapy uh i've done some therapy i'm not doing it right <laughs> now. i've done some yeah, therapy yeah, yeah. i've done some golf <laughs> <laughs> I'm no motherfucking better. I mean, know? but I'm in Nashville, so I don't know anybody there right now, and so I haven't found anybody over there. Go there talk to somebody, yeah. man. Just talk to somebody about it. I'm talking it. to you, man. Yeah, but sometimes, you know, it's so funny. We do these shows, and we do all this talking, and 
even in life, sometimes some shit's just, it's literally right there in front of your fucking face. Yeah. But you're too busy, you know, trying to find the answer all. And it's just like right fucking there. And you don't even bother to go, oh my God, that's fucking right there. But you're hundred percent right though, man. Because if you ask me, are you good stand up? This is the, one of the first times in my life. I'd be like, fuck. Yeah. I don't have any question. Like when I get on stage, it's going to be good. So I am confident. Right. And all that stuff. But there's- I know I'm good because night after night and comic after comic, we follow the best in the world yeah. at the comedy store. And I do well. I know I'm a good comic. Yeah. yeah. I've answered that for myself. By the way, we were talking earlier about performing down at uh, Vine and Center. Oh, three clubs. Three clubs. Yeah. Three clubs. Not three of, it was three clubs. Was it three clubs? Yeah, because supposedly he owned three clubs. And I think that was the third one or something like that. Yep. Well, mm-hmm. I, I called it three of clubs. Everyone up did. Until, I up did until too. right now. It was right there where. <laughs> 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 it was in Pacquiao's gym. Yeah. Uh, Wild card was that's right there. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. But that room. And one of the best in the city for yep. a while. That room, my, one of my. Uh, that room, the Union. Did you ever do? Were you in town? Comedy Union? Union. Nah, just the Union was on Sunset. That might have been a little before mm. your time. But that room and the Union um, were my two favorite in town. One, I love those shows where the people are on top of you. Mm-hmm. There was. One That's night- what I like about the Belly Room. They're right yeah. there on you. Yeah. There was one night at this place, the Union, which on which was on uh, Sunset, and um, it was a tiny room. And there was one night with OAC. And the room was packed and Rogan was on stage and everybody, they opened all the windows and all the doors so you could hear ving, boom. And he, you know, in those small packed rooms, you crush in a way that's hard to explain. Do you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. it is, it's like hysteria because there's so much energy. Just, just He crushed in a way with everybody, dude, sweating because there was no AC. It was such a crazy experience. It, to this day, might be the my, the most memorable still set I've ever seen anyone do in that tiny little spot, dude. Dublin's was like that upstairs oh, yeah. when it first started. World Cafe was pretty awesome yep. back in the day, like that intimate spot. Christina had Tangier back. Christina Pajitsky oh, had Tangier yeah, back in the day. Yeah, it was yeah, just yeah. like that. Yo, Dane killed in a way up at that. Oh, yeah. Up at that. What, the, what was it called? Dublin. Dublin. Good yeah. God. Just crushed. They launched him. Yeah. Well, he was already, I think he was already, wasn't he already? No, that got him over to Laugh Factory a lot, and then boom, Comedy Central half hour, and then away we go. Let's take a quick break and tell you about our first sponsor, Harry's. Too often, we're choosing between quality or a fair price. With Harry's, you don't have to choose. They give you award-winning blades at factory direct prices. All right, they sent, look, you guys know I get stuff. They send me the samples. I love Harry's. I've been using Harry's for a, a long time. All right, I still shave up around this, and I use Harry's. My stepson took the razor. He's got the damn thing, too. It's a great razor. It's weighted. It's really, it's, if you like to shave, it's a great razor. I'm telling you, you get, it just, it's very well done. The kit they send you is so professional. It comes with so much great stuff. And and for a limited time, they're offering their starter set. That's what it's called. Plus a free body wash for just three bucks. All right. At harrys.com slash honeydew. I'm telling you, Harry's delivers a close, comfortable shave at a fair price. It's only $2 per refill. You know what uh, razors cost at the store. And I tell you all the time, they lock them up. They're so expensive, they're locking the razors up. Harry's believes in quality so much that they bought their own factory in Germany so they could own every step of the manufacturing process. Harry's German factory is one of the select few manufacturers in the world that have mastered the technology to create a gothic arch, the gold standard for razor blade grind. They stand behind the quality of their blades so much that they have a 100% money back guarantee on harrys.com. For a limited time, Harry's has an exclusive offer for listeners of my show. New customers can get a Harry starter set and a free body wash for just $3. $3 at harrys.com slash honeydew. That's over a $16 value for three bucks. Here's what you get. You get a five blade razor weighted handle. You get foaming shave gel, a travel cover, and a travel size body wash. It's an incredibly great deal, but act fast while supplies last. Go to harrys.com slash honeydew to redeem your offer. 
Our next sponsor is Skillshare. No matter what 2021 brings, you can spend it creating something meaningful with Skillshare's online classes because time is what we make of it. I'm really excited to have Skillshare on board. Um, honestly, and I said this to them on the call, I believe that classes like this, uh, especially with your kids, are better than online schooling right now. I really think they are. Um, you know, the class I took, I'm, I have it here on my phone because I want to I want to get this title right. It's called Kids Kitchen and um, it's cooking from scratch with under fives. Now, my daughter, I'll be honest, she's a picky eater and I want to get introduced new foods to her. I'm always putting new stuff in front of her, but I want her to prepare the food, make the food, learn how to make it, what's in it. You know, hey, like there's only four ingredients in this and you like all four of them. You might not think together you would, but you do, trust me. So we started taking this class and working with food and trying to, you know, open up her options for eating and stuff. So uh, there's so much stuff on there that you can do by yourself, for your kids, with your kids, whatever you want. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning, okay? With so much to explore, real projects to create, and the support of fellow creatives, Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth. Skillshare is also incredibly affordable, especially when compared to pricey in-person classes and workshops. You know if I took an in-person cooking class, it's not 10 bucks. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. All right, so explore your creativity at Skillshare.com slash Honeydew and get a free trial of premium membership. That's Skillshare.com slash Honeydew, and you will get a free trial of premium membership. Now, let's get back to the do. Let's go back to you. So what are you going to do about it? What are you doing about it? Well, I'll tell you something, man. So here's a couple things. The first thing was me realizing it. That was the very first thing. What made you realize it? I honestly had taken some mushrooms. And so many I, people are telling me about psychedelics and they're realizing shit. I had taken some mushrooms and I was just, I was just going through my past and it just kept popping up, just kept popping up. What? That I'm, I would. The self-sabotage. Yeah, yeah. that I would submarine myself. And just, so you're the, just in your mind, rolling, rolling decks in your past. Yeah. And every time you're seeing this common and not thread. not big ones, dude. Just like little hip checks. Just to bump you off just a little bit. And it, but I would always, dude, because I work hard. So I would always do enough not to blame myself. Mm-hmm. Well, I did all this shit by myself. Again, I would make sure that I was doing all this by myself. So. And then I would be, it's usually, here's how the pattern is. I would do all this shit by myself up to 95%. But I would do the legwork and all that. But the 5% that I know that I need to do, for example, for chaos, to make it look, sound, clips, all the stuff we know you need to do to make something successful. As good as this podcast is, you got to put out nice clips. You got to make it sound good. If it's got Thank ba- you, Ash. Yeah. If it's got bad audio and shit, ain't nobody is listening to Thank it. Thank you, Logan. <laughs> but so- I would do enough not to blame myself, but the things that I knew that I needed to do to push it over, I just didn't do. But I wouldn't blame me. I'd, and I'd say something like, well, I can't do all this shit by myself. But you wouldn't do it because you knew if you did, it would be a good thing and that was uncomfortable and foreign to you. I think that whatever was in whatever's part of me that either thrives in the rejection or likes that feeling of picking himself back up, because I keep, I do. Do you know what I mean? Well, that's what that's what I'm saying. Like yeah. that rejection and that failure and that just dump on early in life yeah. is what drives us. I mean, that's the chip I have on my shoulder. I'll never not have a chip on my shoulder. Oh, yeah. I will always have a chip on my shoulder. I don't care what the fuck happens. But 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 from but from what and what feeling like like feeling like you have to prove yourself? Not feeling like prove prove to myself. I was right all along. I wasn't a piece of shit. Proof to yourself. Proof to myself Mm -hmm. that I was right all along. None of this I'm doing is a fuck you to anybody out there that has ever done anything to me. What this is is a culmination of all those people's fuck yous to me collected and me processing it in a way where I go, give them all to me. It's I'm not going to prove you wrong. I'm going to prove me right. Yeah. I know I'm not what you say or think I am. I know what I am. So give me all your ammunition because I'm going to fucking make a sandwich out of yeah. it. <laughs> I don't even give a fuck. The old ammunition sandwich. 
<laughs> and I'm going to eat it and shit it out. I know I'm right about me. And that's what you know what's crazy? I carry I the chip on my shoulder. I don't it. give a shit what anybody says. That's about what me. I'm saying. I really that's, don't. Being shit on by your own parents, young and like abused and thrown away. What does what Corvette guy eight six four has to say about me and my lamb? Yeah, I don't I, give a, a fuck. Dick. Yeah, yeah. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I agree with that. And I honestly, I can't say you know my parents were not abusive in any way, shape, or form to me. Like I've really been like, where was the wrong? What happened? And I honestly can't put my finger on it. So, but I do know, like I said, what I've what I have been doing is uh you know another example is high life i went with a computer mic and a computer camera mm -hmm. for years and all the comments on youtube and i saw them hey man just get a better camera hey man just get a better camera and i just didn't do you know what i mean i just did it and bill yeah. would be like hey man you, you need to get a better camera and so like those little things is what i'm starting with I'm starting with those little things that like I need uh, the way I look, I need to value myself. And so those little things that I do Same. knock myself down, Same. I need to value myself. Look, you know, I haven't worked out for a year uh, and that's Who the just, fuck has? I know, but that's dude. I was a six day a week, dude. I'm, I'm punishing myself right now. And I just have to figure out how why. Well, that shit chill out on yourself while yeah. Corona punishes the rest of the world. All right, we're all we're all, all you know almost there, man. Yeah, yeah. We're almost but, there. But I I have really in the last probably three weeks or a month figured so much shit out that I feel better. I feel better than I have in a long time. In a long time. That's good. Yeah, man. Yeah, I feel way better. And like like. The stand that my creativity is so much higher in the last month or two since moving to Nashville, actually. But yeah, man, I feel good. I feel like I'm I'm figuring out that once I get out of here, out of here, I'm figuring out that. Well, there are a lot of distractions here yeah. too. But it's the, the here is the wheel. Yeah, but what I mean is. I imagine going to Nashville where you know no one, you're probably getting to know yourself yep. better and you're spending a, a time with your family. Huge yeah. difference. Yeah, huge difference. Huge difference. I don't have this to go run and do real quick down the street. I don't uh, have this to go do. Yeah, it, it's, been a, it's been a huge difference. Um, and that's why I think like not being here and not distracting myself with a thousand shiny things I finally just turned around and looked at myself and been like, "Hey, bro, you know, get your shit, get your shit together. You, why are you still on this wheel running so fast? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then you look at it and you're like, "Oh, you, yeah, you're doing that to yourself, bro. So, and so I've. How old are you now? Fifty one. I can't even. And you're also a grandfather four and times. four time grandfather. Yeah. Um, and it's taken you this long. It's taken me a long time too, man. There's mm -hmm. a lot going on in life. You know, I think that first, for a lot of people, it's like, look, man, you know, there's a lot of trauma early for yeah. a lot of people. And it's like, let me get through this, figure out this fucking thing called life. And then I can get myself on my feet and figure out what the fuck's going on with me. And hopefully you look at yourself and what you bring to the fucking table, you know, which yes. is very big of you. It's not, you're not sitting here telling me right now, well, this exec, da, 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 da. And this lady over here, da, 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 this guy here, but you know, you're sitting here taking ownership of but I'll tell your you, fuck dude, ups. It's professionally. I would tell you personally, I'm not doing that. You know, personally, my relationship with my wife and kids and my family, like I'm not sabotaging myself. It's only professionally. And it's interesting when you said, you're like, yeah, I've done that with a lot of relationships. I'm like, I mean, I didn't say a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say a lot, but I've definitely sabotaged some relationships yeah. that I look back on. I'm like, oh yeah, I fucking ruined that. Yeah. I did that. Cause yeah. I didn't feel worthy. I didn't feel like I deserved it. I didn't feel like, yeah. you know, I was right. I hide behind an excuse or whatever it is. And uh, yeah, certainly have. Yeah. It's crazy, man. You know, uh, it's 
When you live long enough, dude. You said every relationship you ever yeah, been in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just told <laughs> me in there. Every job. <laughs> <laughs> every lease you've been in, you wrecked every. <laughs> Man, what is? Tell me something you've done in a relationship where you've sabotaged it. Um, cheated. Yeah, that'll do it. You know, being younger and and cheating, yeah. And you know it. You know you just sabotage that shit. And you know it's gonna come out. And you know it's gonna you're gonna get caught. Yeah. Yeah, man. You know, but when you're a young dude, uh, you know, I I look at uh, well, I shouldn't say that because Jakey is a relationship guy. He just likes to he likes to be with somebody. I'm like you 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 better person. That's because he got love at home. Yeah. You know, I didn't. So I was like, <laughs> I'm going to take it from you and you and you and you. <laughs> Any about you? All right, you, you. Wait, is your hand up too? All right, you in the back. You just stretching? All right, all right. Just checking. <laughs> was that eye contact? No, you just scratching. All right. <laughs> yeah, man, that's how it goes. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Come on, man. Oh, shit. Dude, I got to tell you, man, you are, uh, and I've told you this before, but you you know in conference, you've done this so many times and you're so good at it, but to be able to make this podcast where people come in and tell whatever, and I've heard a bunch where I'm like, oh my God, and then you'll tell a joke. I'm like, hey, you got a joke out of that? Like there, you know what I mean? But you do it effortlessly without ever offending. Could you say effortlessly nah, without being? <laughs> nah, that's not. <laughs> Can you that's say not an effortlessly, effortlessly <laughs> word. That's not an effortless word. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of F's and R's and yeah, T's yeah. and S's. Effortless. They should change that word. That's a tough one to say. Yeah. <laughs> it's not effort. You got to put some effort behind. You got to effort effortlessly. Yeah. Now you say it a couple times. Doesn't sound like a word. Mm-hmm. But you do it so effortlessly Thank nailed it but without ever offending anybody it's it's a skill man like you're really good at it thank you man yeah. i appreciate it i but i have fun doing this like i fucking love sitting here listening to people talk about their shit and yeah and really put every it puts things into perspective like there i've said it there are times where i'm like what am i complaining about over here like jesus christ yeah. and then other times i hear people and i'm like get your fucking shit together bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have you ever done something like this have you ever been like uh, have you ever yawned no. in the <laughs> <laughs> no, I've not, I mean, I've yawned during the show for yeah. sure, but not because someone's boring. Not run someone's face like this. Not even moving. Never like, I've been like, hey, you got anything else? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like this is gonna stop yeah. it. You got it. just a pet. That's yeah, it. I can't do. I can't do a cat death for an hour. Yeah. <laughs> you know, my dad. You know anybody that knows somebody that had a? <laughs> One of my dad's favorite things. If you were telling a story like at the dinner table or something. And he would just look at you and go, wrap it yeah, up. Yeah, wrap it up. Yeah. And I was like, got it. Yep, good one. One of my uh, favorites was uh, a buddy of mine back in the day, uh, John Migdahl and another buddy, Dylan Way. The three of us went camping on the beaches in Mexico. We drove John's old CJ down and went camping. From was, Maryland? No, from here in oh. California. All right. It was the best time. We had a great time. And we're we're just bonding. It's the three of us. We're on the beach. We, you know, he's got four wheels. So we're out over where only we can get. We've got a nice fire going. We're smoking some weed and and John's opening up and he tells this story about something he did where he disrespected his mom. And he said his dad took him for a walk in the woods and just gave it to him. And he's like, you know, he's getting all emotional about it and everything. He's like, you know, I I, I really uh I really learned a lesson. And he's talking about his dad and everything. And he finally gets done. He's got this tear coming down his face. And I just go, that's the worst fucking story I've ever. <laughs> <laughs> and Dylan jumped right on it, too. And I was like, are you fucking? And he, the look in his face was just like, are you? Oh, and Dude, I, that's, that shit makes me so fucking happy we, to take you from here. And put you up there that fast is, is amazing. Uh, it's so much fun. It's fun. It's like 
It's like scaring. So you know when someone scares you and yeah. then you're so relieved it's yeah. not fucking real and yeah. you laugh like that kind of shit. You remember you were at Brody's memorial at the comedy store? <laughs> yeah, I cried the entire time. Yeah. The funniest thing that happened. So Brody's three friends from the valley get up yeah. and they tell all these stories, these long stories. But Brody is a kid and there's three of them. So they all tell long stories. And Jeff Ross comes on stage right after and goes, after hearing Brody's friends talk, I know why he killed himself. Yeah, he drops that. And, and you can hear the room erupt. Just blew because they need we needed it. We like you're craving that. By the way, the balls, the balls to just lay that down right off the bat when you walk out. That's another thing. Like I was just like that. I was clapping because I was like, oh, my God, there's like two people who maybe would have come out and said that. But to come out, that it crushed. I mean, those are my favorite fucking moments. Yeah. You know, I'm that same guy, the same friend John said to me one time, like I was I just told a story about my dad or something and a few minutes past or whatever. And we're talking and he's like, hey, Ryan, your dad's still dead. Right. And it fucking made me laugh. I can't tell. I I mean, the, I can't tell you how long ago that was. It's still, but your dad's still dead. <laughs> and then, right? How like, did you, like you need yeah, a clarification. Yeah, making sure, right? yeah. <laughs> that's the shit I love about comedy. Is it's that's such a little thing, you know? Still dead, comma right. right. <laughs> and then did he keep going Three with words. the story? No, he just <laughs> dropped it. He's like, hey, your dad's still dead, right? And so sincere that you had to process it for a second. What did you right? say? I just fucking immediately started <laughs> laughing. I didn't say anything, but I died fucking laughing. That's good stuff. Dude. It's great shit. Like but you need I, it. It's I like it. It's a people say dark humor. I don't think that's in a no. way. I guess it is, but there's a different type of morbid humor. That's not really morbid. That's um, I don't know. I just think that's lightening the fucking you know yeah. the moment. And and goddamn, is it's that just funny? Cutting the tension. Well, yeah, I, it's so funny. I've me. never laughed so hard than I, I had at my grandfather's funeral. That's it. I was about to say, I've laughed so hard at some funerals. And you're trying not to. That's the one where you, and you're looking oh over and your brother, you're shaking, they're shaking and you're just like trying to hold it in, but your we stomach's were in ripping the line. over. Yeah. And um, my cousin was next to me, but you know, in my grandfather died, so it was all old people coming through to, for condolences. And he was insulting, I don't know, three out of four of these old people to their face without them knowing. Like smiling and saying the insult. Your teeth used to be whiter. Yeah. <laughs> Still just, straight, but, though. Yeah. Just <laughs> killing these people. And I, I could not stop laughing. It was, but you need it at those places because without it. I we, do. I do, man. Not everyone finds it we appropriate. Do, you but know? you're just stuck in the sadness, man. That's no, you don't want to do that. You know, you look for that. I, um, when my grandmother died, that was a really fucked up time for me because it's only a few years after my father dies. We're now homeless. I'd given her mouth to mouth. Like it was brutal. We witnessed it. Not it even was, when she was dying. Not, no, just, yeah, just, just on a check, Tuesday. Just on a Tuesday. <laughs> I was like, grandma, let me practice. You don't look good. <laughs> Hold on, let me get those. Let me get some chapstick on those lips. It was bad. Yeah. you know the compressions, all of it, CPR, mouth to mouth, and and she dies, and and her one of her sisters, Sister Carmina, is a nun, she's older, but she was hip as fucking cool as shit, and she loved church. She was a nun, so she knew every prayer song, all of it, and she sits right in front of us, and she can't sing for shit, no. and she's ha ha ha. And it's me and my brothers and cousins in a row right behind. And we, I mean, I couldn't. Like, it looked, listen, it looked so disrespectful. Well, you're, oh, you're the, so yeah, yeah. there's six of us, six of us just right, right up front side two. by side. No, we're, we're row two. Uh, we let the adults go row one because we knew <laughs> we also were not idiots. And we're like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. And she's like, oh, and it is so bad. We are just looking at each other like, good God almighty. Yeah. <laughs> I love that, man. So fucking bad. So bad. I, and another thing we did, we did this too. People dared us. There was a couple times at, like, when my father died, it was it was an excused absence from school. We were very popular because we played every fucking sport. You know, everyone came to our house, that kind of shit. And um, so many people are 
adults, teachers, coaches are coming over and they don't know what to say. What do you say to three kids who just lost their fucking dad and yeah. their mom's already gone? Like, what the fuck do you say to these kids? What? Nothing. I yeah. Listen, I, I was that kid. Yeah. I wouldn't know what to say yeah. to me, you know? And so, so many people say, and they do mean it. They mean well, like if there's anything we can do. So viewing night number two, we got through night number one, night number two. We're like, I was like, I'm a fucking just straight up ass somebody for money, How like an you? absurd amount of money. How? We're 16. Okay. And uh, we had our our soccer coach, our JV coach had come up and he's like, hey, if there's anything I can do, I got, actually, we we could use, uh, you see, he's like, what is it? What do you need? And I was like, if there's any way you could just give us like a hundred grand. And this <laughs> dude's jaw, and we started laughing. Our dad's dead in a coffin in the front of the room and we are fucking dying. Cause he was just like ah yeah. ah he, he was like ah he was like I got, I got a twenty I got a t- you gonna tell me no my dad's dead <laughs> right there coach you said anything <laughs> that's what you said to me my dad is dead and you said anything I would have screamed that shit this guy just said he'd do anything for us he's already took it back he ain't even out of room my dad's still up there the coffin's not even closed for Christ's sake. <laughs> I mean, you should have screamed. The next person who comes up here and says that there's anything we can do, you better believe. You better Listen, we need, to, we need a car right now. We need a car. <laughs> who can put it together? That's that's funny, though. And then we came this whole thing. I put on my first album. We had a family death pool. We started having so many fucking deaths. And I would we would jokingly say it to my aunt and stuff. Be like, how you feeling? Like, I'm like... You know, I'm like, good, because I got you this year. She's like, you son of a bitch. Like, they knew. You know, they all knew. But look at this hair, bro. We're I tell, keep telling my cousins, yeah. listen, we're going to be on deck soon. We're going to be the ones people are starting to bet on, you know? Well, you know Stanhope does that death pool. No, I didn't know that. Well, Stanhope has a death pool. A real one? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, he's been doing it for years. For who? Celebrities and shit? Or? Yeah, people, well-known people at death pool. Like, he... And it pays real money? I forget how he does it, but he's been doing it for years. Well, let's not implicate any kind of tax information or anything, if you, you know, in case. I don't know. I don't have any yeah. idea. But I know he does it with his fans. So, it, but but every now and then, I don't know if he still does it, uh, but I think he does. But every now and then I'll catch a tweet like, who had? Nah. uh Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Who had Screech? Yeah. From Save by the Bell. Who had him? You're the winner. <laughs> yeah, I love the outpouring of, you know what I mean, for Screech. But this dude, up until a year ago, you couldn't find a person to say a nice thing uh, about No, you not could not. Not a single not one person. dude to say a nice thing about this guy. Nobody. You know, he didn't even get asked to do the Save by the Bell reboot. I know. That come all because of that terrible porn, I think. He had a porn too. Oh, I thought he was just like uh, I thought he had other trouble. He did have other trouble, but he also filmed a porn. Oh, that's right, because he's got he had a huge dong, right? Didn't I, he have like a big dick? Or I something? don't. I don't think in the video you ever saw his dick. I think people were very disappointed. First of all, if you bought a screech porn video, you should be dis- I'm disappointed in, in you. you. Yeah, you. <laughs> you should be disappointed God in yourself. Right. Yeah, I mean, you. The only disappointment. Is right there. You know what I'm saying? I, you don't just go and look in the mirror and be like, "That was a really bad idea." You know what I mean? Like, ah, what was I? That's the time you can look at it and be like, "I don't deserve." This. No, be- I don't deserve to be here. Because let me just say, let me break it down for you. Don't don't be like, "Well, the girls were hot," but you have the internet, right? So there are a lot of hot girls. So the only difference was that you wanted to see screech fuck. I just can't get. I'm not. Mm-mm. I, I promise you, no matter how long it takes, even if it's just eight seconds, I have better things to do than see Screech's dick. Rest in peace. <laughs> Rest in peace. <laughs> I have better shit to do. Well, I'm going to tell you this. I mean, here's where we differ. I'll look at it if I don't got to pay for it. Eight seconds or not. You know that's the kind of guy I am. Though. I'm saying I'm not going to go hunt it out yeah. and look for it. That takes time. I, I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm going to put it in front of your face. Yeah, at that's some point why I don't time. need to look it up. Yeah. You guys will all, you'll, 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 you'll tell me some schools reopening and I'll click on it'll be his dick. That's what you guys yeah, all do. I'm all excited about the schools reopening. I just keep getting dick pics. How many times? How many? How I know many, what women feel like now. I'm getting dick, pic, dick pics. I've got more dick pics from men. With the black guy? Than I've had fucking naked pics from chick. Yeah, well, not just him. Yeah. Other people too. Like, look at this. 
Oh man! I'm listen. like, what? Was that a forked dick? Yeah. Have, have you, you seen do the two dicks? I haven't seen two dicks. I've seen the head split. Is that considered yeah, like two a dicks? Snake. No, actual two dicks next to each other. Some one person born like that. Two dicks. One guy who's got like two seven or eight inch dicks, something like that, which is greedy. Two of those. It's greedy. I mean, it's you greedy. Piece of shit. One of them couldn't be all little yeah. and shriveled up and shit. <laughs> Like, you know, when the Siamese twins have two heads, one's big and one's small. Like where you had to push this little one out of the way to work like this one. <laughs> like he used one just to just pee. Just a little, just a yeah. little. Yeah. This one all shriveled up. Didn't make it. Didn't make this it. one just looked like the end that you tie the balloon with. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like a pig's tail. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah, this dude's got two... And he claims that one is straight and one is gay. And I'm like, nah. Oh, that doesn't work that nah, way. Nah, I'm sorry, man. Nobody's believing no. that. One's for pussies and one's for buttholes. But, uh, you know, that's it. That's, that's how I'd work it. <laughs> that's how I would do it. This one's just for pussy. And Which, that little shriveled up one right there is for <laughs> The butthole dick like is like a like an old shriveled yeah. up pinky toe, the, just yeah, hanging up, just, hang just with on sunglasses the... on, a cigarette. <laughs> Let's get in that just butthole. Just on the side, like, come on, man. <laughs> Only one. Let eye. me get up in that butthole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like an old jazz singer, <laughs> got a trumpet. <laughs> 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 get out of here. <laughs> Two eight-inch dicks, you son of a bitch. What a, what a <laughs> dick. I mean, of a bitch. it's really, it's greedy. I mean, it is, man. He should have donated oh, one to somebody. God, somebody could it's use Susan. that dick. <laughs> I mean, two people could use one of those dicks. <laughs> I like how you designate one. Oh, shit. One for the butthole. That's the way I work it. <laughs> you know, I don't want to spread any fucking shit to anybody, literally. But this is a butthole dick, all right? I, I, these are the kind of things that I will put in front of you. You you know that I'm going to send you, but you sometimes will be you like. You send disturbing shit to me. And you'll say, before you click on it, what is that? <laughs> and I, what I really want to tell you is, if I wanted you to know what it is, I would have said, this is a video of. Yeah, a guy shitting his balls out. Yeah. Yes. that. Yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> that was one of my favorites, man. That fucked me up. Because it looked like gravy. That's what it got didn't look me. Like, it looked like his intestines were coming out of his ass. So yeah, I the thought way this they was like out. a hernia he was pushing out yeah. at first. And then I was like, those are his balls. Yeah. And they fell with such a length. Grace. And yeah. And Grace. He, was, he seemed like he was in shape and everything else. Like, that, that's the thing that got me. Not that the nuts were in the balls, but how they fell out with such, like, it was like. I've never art. considered putting my own ball bag up my own asshole. Not until I saw that video. Yeah. I never even did that math in my head. Like, I wonder if I could. I've never. Well, I will say this. My grandfather told me once, okay, he sat down in front of me and he went, whoop. And I go, what happened, Papa? And he goes, I just sat on my nuts. And I go, what? <laughs> and he goes, yeah, I just sat on my nuts. And then I go, that happens? And he goes, yeah. <laughs> wait till you get older and you have to hold them in your hand so you don't poop on them. And I was like, what? And he goes, yeah, that's a thing. So Wait, we're going to be sitting down one day holding our ball bags? Be, like, be, because the, I'm yeah. going to throw it over oh, my mom. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to throw it over my shoulder. <laughs> I'm just going to, I'm actually, you know what I mean? I'm going to put them in a little pool of hot, of like warm water next to me. They give me a little mani petty while I'm taking a dump. But yeah, he said, oh you know, when they start to touch, God. when they touch the water, you don't want them to touch the water so you want to pick them up. Unbelievable. Can't wait to get old. <laughs> Dude, the, the, so then when, when he's, that's been in my mind. So I'm not going to lie to you. I have thought, is there going to be a time when my nuts will be able to reach my asshole? So I have thought that before. I've never thought. That guy was young though. He yeah. was not an old man. No. I've seen, I've seen old ball bags at the gym just, you know, stuck to the bench and they're still standing up and drying, but the uh, skin's still stuck there. I'm like, that thing's yeah. stuck on yeah. the wood. <laughs> He's got some gorilla glue on the end of his. I'm like, nutsack. what is on that ball bag? Bro? <laughs> I, it's you know, like an old dude when he talks to you at the gym, he'll Captain Morgan you too. He'll yeah, put his leg yeah, up yeah, and Captain him, Morgan. And you're just like, yeah. <laughs> and it's just you see him with the hair dryer <laughs> pulling their foreskin back. And I'm like, nah, ah, bro. You seen the? Do you see the old guys drying their nuts with the hand dryer 
under the boo Yeah, so I'm saying I've yeah. seen them pull their foreskin back, the ones that aren't circumcised, and dry it off in there, get that smegma out of there. I don't, I, I, yeah, man. Look, Why do, listen, I love you. I love you. Buddy. I want you to be good. We got to get you out of here. This was a great episode. Thank you for coming in and laughing while you're in town. Man, thanks for always um, having me. I appreciate before it. Before we get uh, wrapped this up, please plug everything. Our comedian Um for tour dates. I will be getting out there some. Um, I got a new, when is this, do you think? A uh, couple weeks. Okay. It's still um, going to be new when it drops. Yeah, I'll have a new special out uh, called Father Time. Um, it's some comedy nerd shit. Because I found my very first comedy CD and I was like, there's a lot of good ideas here, but I'm just different. So I rewrote all the, okay. All right. I rewrote all the jokes and, and I'm like, oh, some of these are like really completely different because my brain is different, Mm -hmm. you know? And so it was a really exciting, like this past weekend in Salt Lake city was so exciting to run that material because it was, it felt new and you know that. When you're doing new material, you know how you get that energy? Yeah. Well, the entire set is new. All right. So it's fucking super exciting. But that's called Father Time. And then I do a show called High Live every Monday night. Ryan's been on a bunch. Um, and that's on my Facebook fan page and YouTube channels. And at Josh Wolf Comedy, everything else. My YouTube channel has all my uh, comedy on it. And some other shit because I posted it on there. <laughs> but, uh, and then I got a... Um, after this special drops, I have another the other hour that I was working on before I just started to do this. Should be ready in about five months. All right. Come back and promote it. You know I'm going to do. All right, brother. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, as always, Ryan Sickler on all social media, ryansickler.com. We'll talk to you all next week.